from London, England, it's The Q. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Okay, we're back. Cube alum Patrick Osborne is here. He's the Senior Director of Product Management and Marketing at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Storage. And Doug Hazelman, who's the Vice President of Product Strategy at Veeam. Gentlemen, good to see you. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. So, I, I've been watching Veeam for years now. You know, you go to these the V mugs, and there's Veeam, and you talk to the customers, and what are you doing for backup? Veeam, Veeam, Veeam. And you guys have just done a phenomenal job of just growing your company, you know, building the brand, and so congratulations on that. But uh, how's it going at Discover? Um, it's going great. Uh, you know, we've been a long time partner with HPE, um, definitely on, you know, especially on the storage side. Um, with integration with you know 3PAR and Store Virtual and Store Once, um, you know, I've been working with HPE for I don't know six, five or six years now, and it's uh, been a great partnership. And then you know be able to come here and, and showcase you know what we've got. Um, and we also made a bit of an announcement today too, so that's all good. All right, we'll unpack that a little bit. But so Patrick, <laughs> let me come to you and just um, set the table for us. What are the big trends you're seeing? You know, give us the high-level perspective, and then we'll dive in. Yeah, so one of the things that um, you know, we're making, we made some announcements this week in the in, in the storage area. Um, we are seeing you know this adoption of flash is you know through the roof, non-linear growth. Uh, you know, more than 50% of the systems that we ship from a three-part perspective are all flash, and that's that's growing. Um, what we see is that that is um, it's good and bad, right? Um, it's good for customers that obviously they, they're seeing a lot of savings from flash, certainly performance. What it's doing though is definitely introducing a lot more risk into, uh, into their infrastructure. Uh, if you take a look at Flash from a couple waves, right, people are starting to introduce a little bit of Flash for performance. Definitely starting to get the economics in check in, in wave two. Um, you know, it's definitely more accessible for customers, especially in the mid-sized enterprise, to, to, to buy and deploy all Flash. And then this sort of third wave, which is um, you know, now you're, it's, it's your standard, now you need all the data services that go around it. What we've seen is that has basically increased your risk portfolio from an application density, right? So you can run a lot more stuff effectively on a terabyte of flash than you were able to in the past. So now you've got more volumes, more hosts, more hypervisors, <laughs> therefore more applications running on that single piece of infrastructure. So what we've been talking about is um, the highly resilient all-flash data center, right? And it's technologies like 3PAR and all the data services that come with it, store once, and then partnerships with um, you know, our partners like Veeam that's going to provide that whole solution around availability, really, at the end of the day. So Flash is great. Um, I think a lot of people have used it for accelerating applications, and it's you know, definitely an economics. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great economically for customers, but some of the, nobody loves data protection, right? <laughs> nobody likes to pay for it at the end of the day, but so now what we're seeing is that people are expecting that to be an endemic part of the infrastructure, and you know, partnering with folks like Veeam has helped us do that. Are, are you surprised, are customers surprised when you tell them this, or, or when you go into customers uh, uh, who are adopting Flash and, and tell them that they're taking a greater risk? Um, I, you know, I, I think at, at the end of the day, um, people are always surprised when you point out their risk, pro their risk you know, profile. So we have a number of tools and processes we go through to kind of show people what, what their risk profile is. At the end of the day, you're, you're putting a lot of applications in, in one yeah. basket, right? Yeah. And you guys see that all the time. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's basically you know, kind of what it is. It's, you know, and we saw it with virtualization too, right? Now all of a sudden you've got a lot more stuff running on a single piece of hardware. Well, what if that hardware fails, right? So you, know, you saw the rise of things you know, like backup and disaster recovery focused on virtualization because it was a different risk profile than running everything on physical servers. And same thing with Flash. So. Well, and you've got less copies too. Right? You're sharing you know, a single copy with many more yep. constituents yep. now than you ever had in the past. So, you know, good thing is copy creep maybe <laughs> gets addressed, but sometimes it's good to have a copy around. Yeah. Yep. In case there's a, there's a <laughs> failure. And, <laughs> and that's what customers, you know, they want to see at the end of the day. It's something that, I don't want to go to four or five different tool sets to manage all those copies, right? I want to have an, an integrated experience, right? We talked about this before in terms of customers want to buy a vertically oriented integrated system. 
right? That's going to run a set of applications for them. So they don't want to be messing around with snapshots and uh, replication in another tool, backup in another tool, dev test and copy in, a, in a, you know, yet another you know, framework or UI. Being able to, to, to throw that into, um, into the, your storage layer to be able to do application consistent snaps, snap and replicate, offload for backup, offload for test and dev and making copies is, is definitely something that people are expecting now and we're providing it in our infrastructure. Yep. So how'd this partnership come about? I mean, you know, it's interesting actually the, 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 the data protector division group, product line, whatever, is going to micro focus. Um, but you guys have been partners in the field for mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. Um, does that move, that spin merge with micro focus open up new partnership opportunities? Is this an example? You, I mean, in the past, you might not have been aggressive about having a partner like Veeam on theCUBE. Is that just coincidence, or is that a change because of that spin merge? I think, I mean, we've, we've been working together for yeah. quite some time now, yeah. so for us, we've always had a very open ISV ecosystem mm -hmm. in storage, right? So, I, my personal belief is that you lower the barrier of entry and you lower the barrier of exit, <laughs> right? I mean, so you, if you're open and you have the best product offerings out there, people will choose either breast of breed mm -hmm. or a fully integrated stack. So for me, we've been partnering with all sorts of people and you know, obviously we work very closely with HPE Data Protector and VM Explorer and you know, we have solutions with, with, with that team. Uh, frankly, what we're seeing right now is a very high intersection rate of customers, yeah. right? So people that are, who are Veeam customers that are moving up into the mid-range and the enterprise that are using HPE servers, networking, and storage. I mean, yeah. you, you guys see that all the time. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of you know, where we're moving. But you know, the other thing was, it was several years ago when it was actually the Store Once team you know, that came to us and said, look, we'd like to make sure that we work with you guys because we see your success. Um, you know, and we want to be part of that as part of that open, open ecosystem. So, and that, you know, that obviously, you know, went, moved to, towards other things and you know, now we have primary, primary array support for, for three par and store virtual. Um, you know, they were the, the first array supported um, on, on our platform. So, um, it's just, like I said, it's been a great partnership. And you guys, you guys initiated that integration, is that right? Or? Um, on, the, on the primary storage we did, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, it was joint. We said, hey, we want to work with snapshots. And, and they said, great, here's how you do it. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and HP was, HP was great to work I, with. I guess my point, Doug, is that you guys were small, but you're gaining share very rapidly. Yeah. Now you've hit critical mass, and it's like, <laughs> boom, you know, on the radar. Because you've got others as well at that intersection. I mean, I'm sure Symantec you know, pops yep. up in your mm -hmm. radar. I don't know Keep in mind too that these guys sell where we don't, right? And yeah, we sell where, 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 yeah. where they don't right now. Yeah. You know? So cool. you guys are going to capture you know, tens of thousands yep. of new customer logos this year, right? And mm -hmm. we obviously you know, want to have an integrated solution so they choose HPE infrastructure. Double click on that. Where, where, what's the, where, what are the swim lanes? Um, well, so what we, what, uh, the announcement uh, that we put out today was uh, we're now part of the um, HPE Complete program. Uh, which essentially means that um, HPE can now resell uh, Veeam software to any of their customers or their partners. Uh, so it's essentially a reseller agreement, um, and it means that you know HPE sales can go out um, and and offer you know a complete integrated bundle that includes Veeam um, as part of that availability platform. Well, but you were What's saying, different though? But you were saying before there's not a lot of channel conflict. There's right? not a lot of what? Channel conflict. No. You're saying you're selling different places. Absolutely. What are yeah. those places? How would you characterize where you typically sell and what the upside is for you with this? Yeah, so I mean, so I sell. think historically from an HPE perspective, right, you're seeing us in the, the fat part of the mid-market, especially enterprise and, mm -hmm. and certainly large enterprise, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know that you, the Veeam folks have been super successful in capturing hundreds of thousands of yes. SMB customers, the mm -hmm. customers that are likely to grow yeah. very quickly, yep. you know, individually as well as a pool of customers, right? So your model on, from a marketing and freemium yep. and that conversion is very different from the way we go to market. Mm -hmm. So I think having those two engines working together is, yeah. been, is, is, our, is our Yeah, like I said, we, you know, we have over 200,000 customers, but they're not the Fortune 200,000. Um, you know, and, so and, that's, and that's a good you're, thing. You're both so. getting access to new markets exactly. from, the, from this yeah. deal. But, and the why of that is it's, been a, it's a channel issue, not a technology issue, correct? Um, it, it's not even a channel issue. We've been working in the channel for, for several years. Well, we I'm have, saying, you don't have the channel to that F Fortune 100. Oh, well, or, yeah, or I mean, the, the, the sales force right. and those types of things, yeah. It's not a direct, yeah. You're not a direct sales organization. No. But it's not the technology, though, correct? No. Or, I mean, no, it's not the from technology. technology. Scale, no. performance, yeah. Yeah. You know, feature set, yep. robustness, yep. that's all there. Yes. I mean, we're not really digging into what all there means, but <laughs> I'll take your word for it for now. Yeah. But, yeah. but every every release, you know, every release we see more and more enterprise customers joining on, 
and uh, you know, we, we, we get more scalable, um, you know, better performance. You know, we're, we're protecting you know, customers with tens of thousands of, of right. VMs and hosts. And so yeah, you, you don't hear issue. Veeam as a toy. Yeah. You, you don't, I mean, it's not like you know, some examples of 1.0 yeah. products that you know, <laughs> don't have it. So. Who so are I you displacing? Get. You must be displacing someone in those yeah, big customers. Typically we're displacing um, whoever the incumbent is or was. Um, whether that's you know, Veritas, um, you know, sometimes it's Commvault, sometimes it's EMC, sometimes it's IBM, or whatever they are now. Um, sometimes it's HPE. Sometimes, sometimes it's HPE. Um, but it's typically, you know, as they're modernizing the data center and, and retooling how they do things, they're looking at what's the best way to do this specific task. And they realize that maybe the tool that they currently have may not be the best, and they go look for best of breed. For customers who are moving from, uh, from, from a, an all disk environment, uh, investing heavily in flash, how does that change their, their DR and their, their resiliency strategy? Uh, you know, from, from a flash perspective, it, it doesn't really change much from, from our perspective. I mean, things are obviously faster um, in terms of you know, being able to get uh, offload the data, whether they're doing a backup or a replica. Um, you know, and, and in the case of you know, the snapshot integration, you know, being able to, to, to snap that over and, and, and replicate that across platforms, you know, it's, it just makes things, you know, from our standpoint, it's faster. So. Well, I mean, virtualization was a huge tailwind yeah. for Veeam. I mean, yeah. that really was what put you guys yeah. on the map. I mean, it seems like all flash, let's think about this for a second, I guess synchronous replication at a modest distance starts to make less sense. It makes sense yeah. on, on site, yeah. but then put it across the Hudson River, Nah, yeah. what's the point of that? I think the techniques, the <laughs> expectations and the techniques are changing, right? Yeah. When, when, yeah. You, when Doug talked about you know, modernizing the data center and mo modernizing your, some specific processes, what, what I'm seeing is that there's no more backup window, right? So no. you've got this huge fan in of applications on specific infrastructure. So at the end of the day, nobody's processing for eight hours and then backing up for eight hours, right? That just doesn't exist anymore. So as much as you can unload onto the infrastructure, so I can take you know, coarse from a, uh, a data set perspective, but very granular from a time perspective, I can do that over and over and over, right? And then I can do things like selective restore, right? Yeah. Through RMC or through Veeam Explorer. Yeah. And what we're seeing is customers, their expectation is that they are checkpointing and backing up and replicating all day long, every day. Yeah, yeah so I'm making a copy on site. Yep. I'm getting it off site as fast as I can, maybe to a store once or some other mm -hmm. purpose built yep. backup appliance, and I'm trying to minimize my RPO as best I can. Yep. Exactly. And get as close to zero yep. RPO as possible, yep. which is and, impossible. And, and, and what you're know. seeing now <laughs> is that that granular le level now is at the VM, right? Or at a much larger data set, you know, even at a giant at a at a VM data store, as opposed yeah. to in the back in in the past, it was I'm going to back up and I'm going to go and index a bunch of file systems, and people aren't really doing that anymore. Does right? containerization change the game at all? Um, I think now that you start, so we have a you know strategy around containers from a storage perspective. What we're we're starting to see more customers ask for persistent storage options for containers, right? Oh. So what we see now is that if, you know storage from a container perspective is ephemeral, right? Um, but people that want to have persistent storage options, it'll be you know either in a software-defined nature, or we have a bunch of things like plugins with Docker and Flocker and things we do with Store Virtual and 3PAR. Um, I think that. Uh, from a data protection standpoint, it even creates more of a fan in and fan out, you know, in terms of the number of like items that you have to be responsible for. So, and I know you guys have some plans on the on the on the, on the container side. So, I don't yeah. know if you guys want to address. Well, I mean, that you know, it, it depends. Obviously, it depends, like you said, how the customer is planning on using containers. But you know, typically, where we want to be is we want to provide you know the availability for the data behind them. You know, so you know that's kind of our our strategy is you know maybe not you know, look at containerization, you know, support individually, but definitely have that support for the infrastructure behind the containers um, and, and have and all the data that, that, they're, that they're accessing and utilizing. Yeah, because your point is, most containers you're going to throw away anyway, yeah. right? So if you've got 10,000, 9,999, yeah. don't need backup, yeah. but the infrastructure that's supporting exactly. that obviously does for whatever it is you want to persist. Yeah. You're kind of container agnostic is what mm -hmm. you're saying there. Right. Yep. Okay. And a lot of people are running containers in, in VMs right now. Yeah. Right? Because you're in a test dev, kick the tires type of mode, so it fits into the model that you know we have going on right now. I mean pretty much everywhere now with Linux. Yep. Right? Yeah. Embedded. So okay, what's next for you guys? Where where are you? Well, so I mean for us we're we're trying to get everyone uh, on all flash 
as fast as possible. And the way we're doing that is, uh, you know, we offered, we just announced a program called Flash Now. You're right? bombing prices. We are now <laughs> bombing prices. We are, we are passing on the value to our customers, okay? Um, what we, so we announced Flash Now, so you can get, uh, you know, an all flash system for three cents a, meg, uh, a gig, right, per month, and then you can actually get integrated data protection into that for an additional penny, right? So we're making it, we're providing, uh, the technology, uh, the capabilities from Flash, you see we actually have a tech preview um, for uh, 3D Crosspoint, so NVMe in 3PAR, we got it running on the show floor uh, today, so you're starting to see new media being introduced you know, for storage class memory. So all that, we're going to provide it for, to customers in a consumption model, so maybe, you know, maybe the public cloud is good for you for some workloads, um, maybe it's not, but you really like that consumption model, we can provide that to you for your storage. And Antonio Neri said you've got 100, 100 customers who are in preview mode on that, on that service right now. Well, what kind of volumes are they, uh, are, are they uh, working with? In terms of capacity? In or? terms of the, uh, yeah, the amount of capacity they're buying from you on this, this pay-as-you-go basis. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's all across the board. I mean, we see, I mean we're, we're shipping you know, eight and 16 terabyte uh, flash drives now, so you know, if, you're, you're configuring 32, 64 drives, you know, you're talking so hundreds, hundreds of terabytes on, a, on an individual frame. The system scale up to petabytes, so we, we, you know, we can provide that kind so of just, scalability. So just to clarify, Patrick, what you said, it's four cents a gigabyte per month for all flash and a fully backed up yep. volume. It's completely is, integrated. And that's a Veeam integration? Or? No, no, they, they can provide, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk, <laughs> I'm not going to okay. talk pricing. So we're not talking but. capacity on demand for Veeam yet. This is, this is physical infrastructure, so flash for your primary storage, store once for your, for your right, secondary okay. and then, storage. Yeah. And Veeam then, license on top of that. Yep. yep. Got it. And you get it all through HPE now. Awesome. All right, well listen, congratulations on the, the partnership Thanks. and the growth of Veeam and Love it, we'll see you guys tonight, I hope. Yep. Absolutely. All right, thanks, thanks for, for having us on theCUBE again. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is theCUBE, we're live from the docks of London. Right back. <laughs>